Hello, I'm Mike Rosette with the Palisade Insectary, and I'll be speaking about the biological control of puncture vine, mostly in Colorado, but also including some of the early biocontrol history in the Western United States. I'm not going to go into the biology or ecology of the plant since I'm sure you're all familiar with this evil weed and the damage it can cause, other than to point out that puncture vine is an annual plant that can only reproduce from seed. Now we'll get right into the biocontrol insects used to combat it. There are really only two agents in use in North America. One is the seed weevil, Microlarinus larinii, and the stem weevil, Microlarinus lipriformis. The seed weevil is by far the more common. They were both imported from Italy in the early 60s and released by the USDA in most of the Western states. They established in the warmer areas but failed to take in more northern regions with colder winters. But then in the early 70s, USDA researchers started finding weevils that had moved up into the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma and even up into Kansas and Nebraska. They figured the weevils had slowly adapted to colder parts and were moving northward. In Colorado, it wasn't until, until 1977 or 78 that weevils were discovered in the far southeast corner of the state. We'll talk more about this so-called cold hardy strain in Colorado in a little bit. Just a brief review of the life cycle of the weevils. The adults overwinter in plant debris and litter near decomposing puncture vine plants, and in the spring begin to feed on new growth before mating and laying eggs into pits chewed into the fruits. The larvae then feed on the developing seeds before pupating. New adults emerge from the seeds in the fall and feed a while on puncture vine leaves before overwintering near the soil line. The weevils have one generation per year here in Colorado, but may have se several generations in warmer climates. The life cycle of the stem weevil is virtually the same, ex except that females lay eggs within the stem of the plant instead of the seed. There haven't been a lot of published articles on how well the weevils are working since the early research done in the years just after the original releases. But USDA workers did gather some great data back then on weevil efficacy. During the first year of release in California, one researcher who studied the weevils for most of his career estimated that a release of 50 weevils in July at one site grew to 25 to 100,000 seed weevils by fall. A couple of other studies done almost 20 years after, after the initial releases in California found that puncture vine was controlled in most of the warmer areas where weevils were released. And a very long-term study, a 20-year study involving 1,200 sample plots in several Southern California counties showed significant biocontrol of puncture vine, including a 46% reduction in seed production overall. And perhaps most impressive were releases made at one site in Hawaii, where weevils destroyed 75% of the seeds and all of the plant growth within a year of being released. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, we don't have a lot of good recent data. All of the monitoring sites we have set up here in Calif Colorado have been ruined by inadvertent spraying or for some other reason. So if you know of any good study sites that won't be disturbed, please let us know because we'd really like to set up more monitoring sites. The Palisade Insectary has been collecting and redistributing the cold hardy strain of, of the puncture vine weevils since 1978. Last year, we collected over 21,000 weevils 
and redistributed them across Colorado. Since the late 70s, the insectary has also shipped weevils to many Western states and even into Canada to help others start their own cold hardy weevil colonies. Here's a map made by Sonia Daly that shows the releases made in Colorado in 2021. You can see that the worst puncture vine areas are in the metro Denver area, and the weed is a particular problem in the counties northeast of Denver, where there are a lot of horse and cattle properties. So I've mentioned the cold hardy strain of puncture vine weevil several times, but we really don't know a lot about it other than we know it can survive and thrive throughout the range of puncture vine here in Colorado and possibly elsewhere. But until now, no one has studied this trade in detail. Kristen Bowers and Dave Thompson at New Mexico State University decided to look into this more closely. They've set up a cooperative project involving New Mexico State in Las Cruces, the Agricultural Science Center in Farmington and the Palisade Insectary to look at several different questions. First, they wanted to find the current field distributions of the two puncture vine weevils in the western U.S. and then, after collecting weevils from across different latitudes, compare their current cold hardiness limits using laboratory experiments and also test overwintering survival in field trials at three different latitudes, from central Colorado to northern New Mexico and down into southern New Mexico. The way this part works is they set up five field cages in each location. The photo shows the five cages here in Palisade, Colorado. Then there are five in Farmington and five in Las Cruces. Each cage has partially buried potted puncture vine plants that had weevils collected from all three locations placed on them in the fall in a randomized block arrangement. Every month, certain plants are collected and analyzed in the lab to determine how well each population set is surviving the winter. Another part of the study is to determine the potential phenotypic plasticity of the weevils in the western U.S. What do I mean by this? Well, one of the major issues we have in more northern climates is a lack of weevils for the huge demand that is present. Their tests will help determine if the southern weevils, which are in good supply, could be acclimated to colder temperatures and then ship north to assist in biocontrol puncture vine in more northerly climates. This study is ongoing and they will hopefully have some results later this year. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues at the Palisade Insectary for their help on this project. And if you'd like to learn more about puncture vine biocontrol, feel free to contact me at the Insectary anytime. Thank you.